And I want to be at the point where people are going to say, oh, that's a Gail Faulkner painting. And that's why I'm willing to play and willing to change and grow and always keep an open mind about possibilities. I very much believe in the art world for myself is be outside the box. Mm -hmm. Never be what's expected. Never be what the textbook says. You got to do this, this, and this. And even though I don't have a degree in art, many times I think I'm kind of lucky because I have made up my own rules. More freedom. A lot more freedom. You know, I, I know what a lot of those are, but I'm not tied to them in the sense that I need to do just that because I do right. it because I want to. Tell us about the process, because the process itself is unique in the way that you do it, even with the use of tools. Well, and I love using the palette knives, and um, because you, it's a texture you put down, but sometimes it's an unknown texture, and you really do go with happenings. And the reason I put that base down with a brush to get my composition is also because when you pull a palette knife across the canvas, it kind of does this hop, skip, and jump where it's not necessarily going to cover everything. So it's important that you have something underneath there. And then you just start putting in layers. And uh, depending on um, where you are within the painting, you do certain kinds of things to get um, areas of the landscape to push back, certain things to bring the, those areas forward. And so those things are always working in my head, and at the same time I'm doing that balance of letting the painting kind of guide me as to what it needs. And so the texture is very different when the paint is all wet, mm -hmm. and then I talked about when it gets kind of sticky, and then something different happens when it's dry. And you almost hear music when it's dry because you're pulling your palette knife across that canvas mm -hmm. and you're hearing that scraping kind of fun sound. And depending on how thick the texture is or how big the, the texture is, will be a different sound. But that gives you different kinds of effects. And um, I like my colors to be bold. I like them to have a subtlety to them, a sophistication. And I will seldom, very seldom, use a pigment directly out of the jar or the tube. I'm a big, big believer in mix those colors, mm -hmm. come up with some nuances that aren't automatically there. And by doing so, I think you get some additional layers and a lot of vibrancy. And even if it's a subtle group of colors, it can still have vibrancy. I think it's the versatility of acrylics. And I do use um, acrylic gels and a modeling paste for my, my big aspen or, or birch trees. And um, I think that they're, they're just fun because you can kind of experiment a little bit. You can really play. And I think that's probably the, the definitive um, explanation is you get to play. And you can play and play and you still can have things happen pretty much like you want them to. But I think that painting will know when it's an adult. That painting will just kind of know when you're finished. And I think one of the hardest things for an artist to do is know when a painting is finished. And so for myself, if I put a couple of things on there and I take them both off, that painting's probably done. I think when you really stand back and look at it, it's like, okay, this works. I mean, the balance is there. And I do kind of go through a checklist. If there's something wrong with the painting, it's usually value contrast. So I, I'll ask myself, okay, are the values correct? Are the color ranges, the intensity levels? are all of those things where they need to be for this painting to work. And it's not that I run through that list, but my subconscious does. And you just kind of know. And when I finish a painting, the thing I want to accomplish is that I want every individual to feel like they can literally walk into that painting, lean against a tree, hear the, the bees, see the butterflies, feel the wind on their face, all those kinds of things so that they immerse themselves within that world. And a lot of times when I'm describing our painting, I'll say, well, just you know, go in there and lean against that tree and just breathe. Mm. Because I think we all need a place that we can do that. It's kind of a stressful world out here now. So it's good to have a place when you get home at the end of the day or, or whenever that you can just figuratively walk into that painting and breathe. Kind of find your oasis, your, your happy point. And I think that's good.